Hello YouTube and welcome to new tax laws video. Let's continue with a brand new Huawei P Smart Plus or Nova 3i. This device got several names around the world, but here in Europe it's called P Smart Plus. I got here the P20 Lite just for comparison reasons because of the notch and the normal P Smart without the plus. This video will be all about setup and the first impression to around the device. So we will figure out is there something new in the setup process and then we'll see how much free storage do we got, which apps are pre-installed, what about the fingerprint sensor, the camera, do we already feel the speed performance difference with the new Kirin 710 in comparison to the old Kirin 659. Uh, so we got our nano SIM card, we got the SIM card tray tool. This is my own, there's another one included inside the box. Uh, the SIM card slot is located on the left side. Just push in, slide the slot out and you will see there's two, uh, two spaces. The right side is a SIM 1 slot and on the left side you can decide if you want to put in another SIM card or a micro SD card for more storage reasons. Then get your SIM card, chip down and the corner uh, down right, slide this tray back into the device and then the on off button is located on the right side of the device. Push it, still push it, keep pushing it. The device will vibrate and you will see the Huawei logo and the powered by Android logo. And I really have to say, yes, you still see the bl if you get the purple version. Uh, if you look straight to the, on the device, you see to 98% just black. There's no screen protection for it on the device. And you see a slight dark bluish frame if you look directly on the, to the device, but not even close to these colors here. Oh, and now let's see the notch comparison between the P20 Lite and the P Smart Plus. The notch is not double as double as big, but maybe 50% more notch you get on this device. So we see we got 50% of battery. Our SIM card got already a mobile connection. Then we say choose the language. I'd say English and I'm in Germany right now. So, okay, let's get started. I have to agree to the terms and conditions, so terms of use, yes. And in the next step, there's a question if I want to connect to my Wi-Fi, I can skip this and use my mobile data connection, but I select my Wi-Fi and enter my Wi-Fi password. When it's connected, hit next, and then sign into your Google account, use your Google email address and your Google email password. And yes, SwiftKey is still installed. And then Google services, you can check these little things individually if you want to use it or if you don't want to use it. Uh, scroll down and then hit I agree or I don't agree. So then this question about the Google Assistant, do you want to use this one? I definitely want to use it. I turn it on, give it permission and now I do, so, do the voice match. And then the question, can I use it to unlock the device when it's in standby? I say yes. And there's a Huawei ID question. Do I want to use Huawei, Huawei services? Do I want to use Huawei's cloud? Do I want to use Huawei's app store and all this design store and all the things? I say no, I don't really want it. I don't really need it. You can choose by yourself, okay? But you can also log in and register for it uh, later on. But I just say now skip. Then Huawei is telling me, oh, you're missing a lot of so many great opportunities here. Um, this is the same thing that uh, Samsung, for example, is saying you exactly the same, but I still say skip and no, I don't want to enable the Huawei cloud. I just hit skip. Yes, I really want to skip it. Whoa, they're getting really needy here. Then the device protection. Yes, I want to set up the finger ID. Yes, next. So I want to use enable it. First, I choose a normal pin. Oh, this is now a six pattern pin. But if you hit change unlock method, uh, you get more methods to unlock. Four digit pin, custom pin, pattern or password. I say four digit pin is enough for me. So I say one, two, three, four, five. I then confirm it, one, two, three, four. Hit enter. Locates the fingerprint sensor on the back side. Yes, so I place my finger on it. The device vibrates a little bit. And then I follow the instruction here. Place your finger where the, where the red dot is telling you to place it. So side, tip, down, button. Now tip, tip, and there we go. 
I don't have the opportunity here to uh, put in another fingerprint, but if I hit left, no, if I go back, no, say face unlock, no, I don't want to use it. So I call this, there was a nice little trick here. Get one step back and then you can register another fingerprint, but no, this won't work anymore. So enhance services, enable it, no, thank you right now, not user experience program, thank you, no. Do I want to import my data from another, another Android device, an iPhone, an iPad, the Huawei Cloud Backup or the Google Cloud Backup? I say no, because I want to see how much free storage I still got on the device. Set as new device, yes please. And we are ready and we should enter the home screen. And woo, definitely nice first impression. I like the color, the design. We don't got uh, buttons below the display. No, we got on-screen buttons. There's no Huawei logo here. This lo looks looks like a decent device. Um, then first step, I go into settings and find out storage. How much free storage do we le got left? 64 gigabytes and we still got 50.6, so 50 gigabytes. This is a standard value. In my opinion, it's a little bit too high, but especially the firmware taking nearly 10 gigabytes out of it. Uh, other services get 2.8. Um, okay, 50 is standard, but I still think 50 is too high or too low out of a 64 gigabyte device. But still, I guess 50 gigabytes should be sufficient for a lot of people out there. So, which apps are pre-installed? Of course, we got all the Google, uh, the Huawei apps, Phone Manager, Themes, Video, Health, uh, high care, we got uh, tools here for the weather, FM radio, flashlight, mirror, compass, phone data things. We got other apps, people who I guess maybe paid for it to be on this device, booking.com, eBay and Netflix. A couple of games, Asphalt, okay, but keep in mind you can delete them with ease, Facebook. But we also got the Google standard apps. We got the Chrome browser, of course, uh, but also Gmail, YouTube, uh, Maps, Music, Photos, uh, the Office apps. So this is everything that's on the device. Okay, it's, it's, it's standard, let's say that. We got, could enable the Google Now cards, and I guess this animation is way smoother than on previous devices. This is a nice, neat trick of while we're here changing the uh, fade in, fade out animation. So this looks way smoother than uh, previous devices. Okay, this is definitely new. What about our fingerprint sensor? Oh, first of all, of course, I can unlock the device with my fingerprint, but now I also want the device to uh, be able to use the device with my left hand. So I need my left index finger uh, secured as well. So I hit uh, settings, security, then fingerprint ID, then fingerprint management, uh, enter the pin I've chosen, and then I can uh, add a new fingerprint here. So new fingerprint. Locate the fingerprint sensor on the back and now enter, uh, follow the instructions again. Move your finger around uh, and we will be done in an instant, I guess. Yes, successfully. Okay, so now I can also uh, unlock the device with my left finger. Yes, this works nice. Okay, so this could be a little bit faster. I'm pretty sure we have seen other Huawei devices that can do this a little bit faster, but still, okay. Next step, display. First impression of the display, I see a lot of resemblance um, with the P20 Lite display, which was an okay display, which was of course not as good as the big displays of the P20 brothers, or especially as the P20 Pro, okay. But um, you know what I mean? This it was, it was closer to the standard uh, displays of the P Smart, uh, the Mate 10 Lite, even the Honor 7X, the Honor 9 Lite, and all those devices. So if I let's look at the viewing angles, looks definitely familiar, comparable to the P20. Okay, uh, what about maximum brightness? Let's turn it up. And nice colors, definitely. Let's get a bright background. So I get into its settings. You see the ca camera, uh, camera is darkening. Uh, Definitely nice. What about reflections? We still got reflections, but the brightness doing a nice job uh, fighting those reflections. Okay, let's turn the brightness back down. So first impression of the display, decent. Yes, definitely decent. What about the camera? Uh, switch camera modes, GPS takes enabled. Yes, I want to see or want to know where I took my pictures. 
And there we go. This is a camera, the standard camera settings with AI enabled. Let's turn AI off, get a normal picture and see, do we notice any difference here? Yes, the AI is again putting a lot of colors on like a filter on the device on the picture but you can turn it off and on later there we go this is the original picture which now looks like the picture i've taken without the ai and if i enable ai it's yeah it's it's giving you more colors here okay but still you got enough options here to play around we got aperture we got the portrait mode we got photo video ar lenses if you want to look uh, get some bunny Bunny ears, okay, we got the smooth lens, of course, as I'm sitting behind the camera, this is a little no face detected. Of course, now up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. Uh, um, we know those tricks from, from Apple, we know those tricks from Huawei here, so we got this now on, uh, from Samsung, now we got this on Huawei as well. Still, all our camera modes are still there, and if I go to photos, okay, now front facing camera. First of all, settings. Uh, so we got front facing resolution for 24 megapixel and the second camera, the so two megapixel depth camera, um, or the second camera for the depth informations. So I got, and now I still got the HDR Pro mode. We got AR, let's see. Oh, where's the beauty mode go uh, gone? I don't see a beauty mode an anymore. So, but still let's choose portrait. Okay, we, there was a beauty modus there. There we go. So port from beauty level. Turn it off. No, come on. So do, I, do you uh, portrait beauty beauty level zero? So let's check this one out. Do it correctly behind the camera. Okay, one without the AI and another one with the AI. So and this is oh man, this is totally out of focus. <laughs> The background is way sharper than the, than, than the front. This is horrible. This is not even close. Oh man. But okay, let's change to the back side. Let's check photos, settings, 60 megapixel camera on the back side. Okay. Uh, and now we go, are going to take just standard normal pictures. One, what's about the speed here? Okay, speed is okay. Now let's able, enable an AI. Ooh, definitely other colors, but taking pictures fast enough. What about video? So we switch over to video and uh, we go into settings. Video size can be chosen between full HD and full HD 60 frames. No 4K. I don't know why. We can choose uh, the format between two, H264 and H265 here. Okay, this is nice. We asked for this features a lot and now we don't get it anymore. So, oh, we don't actually need it anymore, but um, and this is the other story. But I'm not happy about that this video resolution is only 1080p. So let's start recording a video. I get a little bit closer to the device so that we can check out the microphone and, and then listen to the speaker. We got only one speaker on this device, no stereo speaker sound on, on the P Smart Plus. So 15 seconds and now we're listening, listen in. Turn up the, no, 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 turn up the audio uh, volume level to 100%. So. And there we go. So. Oh, okay, this is the second video. Now listen to the, to the real video. There we go. Recording a video. I get a little bit closer to the device so that we can check out the microphone and, and then listen to the speaker. We got only one speaker on this device, no stereo speaker sound on, on the P Smart Plus. So, okay, uh, normal audio sound recording quality, I would assume, speaker quality or microphone quality. We got a little bit background noise. I don't know from the, if it's from the speaker or from the, from the microphone doing the recording. But still okay. Video quality, I guess, looked looked okay. Video stabilization, I'm not pretty sure if I still see any stabilization at all. Um, pretty not. Wasn't even sure if I could activate this in the settings. Let's get back here, back here into the camera menu, hit settings and lens object tracking. But there is no point here for video stabilization. This is not good 
I don't really know what is here. So from the first impression, I would assume don't, um, I have to do a lot of testing, of course, but first impressions here. Don't, I don't think that these cameras will be any different than from the standard cameras we have seen at Huawei devices in the first half. Don't get fooled by the megapixel numbers. This is definitely, no, 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 no. About the performance, we have to figure out how much faster the Kirin 710 is, okay. We still got micro USB. Uh, I don't know why. Okay, I know why, because Huawei is giving you micro USB on a 300 device so that you buy a USB type C Huawei device for 400 euros, while you get USB type C devices from other manufacturers for 200 euros. But we will figure this one out later. Fingerprint scans are a little bit slower than on other devices. Uh, display looks decent and build quality is really nice. And the color and the design, this definitely looks fantastic here. This is something I'm really looking forward to, to show off and to present out there in the real world. But um, overall, I'm not yet convinced about uh, why there's a Huawei P Smart Plus on the market at all. But we will talk about this later. But this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.